Hi there you guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Brianna Molina and welcome to my channel. Today is going to be part two of going on a Navy deployment. It's kind of a series that I've begun. So my first one was just a little bit about my reaction, being told I'm going to be sent to Japan for six months and kind of all the different times I was told I was going on deployment and then didn't go on deployment and then actually finding out that I am going, it's official, airline tickets are booked. So now I'm getting input from a lot of my different friends as to what I should and shouldn't be bringing. I'm kind of going to go over like three separate lists, more like two separate lists because I got two big lists from like two of my different friends. And then I have been talking to the first class who's actually going out to Japan with me. She's my team lead and she is a female so it was like extra helpful and we've been in communication and she also gave me some really important things to bring. So I have my own notebook here and then I'm going to be making my list that I'm going to use to go shopping with. And then if they are missing anything, I'm gonna also include that. But I feel like these lists are really in depth and they look pretty in detail. So I feel like I'm if they didn't miss anything, like I don't think I'm gonna really add anything. <laughs> I think they covered it all. So. Okay, so this one was from a friend. He took the time to write this out for me. He's been underway a few times. My hair is definitely falling out. I just needed to put it up and look presentable for a video for you guys. So this is the first list. Things to bring on deployment. Work shirts, 10. Skivvies, which is your undergarments, my civilian or new to the Navy friend. Well, new to the Navy friends know what skivvies are, but those of you who don't know, this is just, I don't know if you're watching this for fun or what, most people watching this, I think are military members, so you should know what skivvies are. But they're your undergarments, your undies. So, skivvies, 10, socks, 10, gym shorts, four to five pair, FRVs. I don't know what that is. Thank you so much. Also, what are FRVs? I don't know what those are. And he put two of them, so I, I need to see what those are. Oh, he responded, coveralls. I have, so I have coveralls. Okay, so he says black webbing belt. That's like the belt that you get in boot camp, like the regular belt, and it's all called, I think, a webbing belt because you need belt buckles to web through. You web that part of the belt through the through, through the, the buckle. Yeah, so he put two of those and two of obviously the buckles because you need to have the whole buckle, the whole setup. The LED red lights, I've actually heard this one because where the racks are, where you go to sleep, where it's always dark from what I've heard because people have all different types of schedules on the ship. So you're supposed to like get red lights, like a red flashlight, so that whenever you need to get to your rack, whether it's to go to sleep, when you're waking up and you have to change, all of that, like they recommend using this, like a red flashlight, because it's not so harsh. And like, when people are sleeping and stuff like that, you don't want to be like shining your bright white light off of your phone or a regular flashlight. Beanie or hat? I don't know about that one. I don't think I, I don't really wear hats like that. I mean, I have to wear it in uniform, but like on my own, I need to wear more hats. I have a lot actually, but I just don't use them, so I don't think I'm gonna bring them on deployment. Maybe one. You know what? Maybe it's squished. No, I don't want to bring them. Oh, maybe he means the military one. The military one I still have. I'm definitely gonna bring that because if I get cold, cover my ears. Parko liner and fleece. Um, so that's like a jacket that the Navy gives you. And then the fleece is like the warm part. It looks like, like a North Face. Definitely bringing both of those. I'm gonna freeze and I hear the ship's cold, so we'll see. Pillowcases, two, sleeping bag. Comfortable shoes, dual purpose for workout and just boat shoes. So I guess just like whenever you're not working or something. Microfiber towels. So that's super important because they are gonna dry really fast when they're microfiber versus a regular thick soft towel. Shower shoes, that's a huge one. I'm gonna buy like multiple I'm probably gonna buy like three pairs of shower shoes because God forbid I lose something or something gets stolen. Next thing is a long one, it's toiletry. So shampoo, body wash, toothpaste, toothbrush, razor, lotion, nail clippers, comb, deodorant. Multiple travel size items are preferable to one large bottle or item. First aid items. Neosporin, Tylenol, cough drops, band-aids, antifungal, sunscreen, vitamins, and chapstick. And then he put entertainment, books, ebooks, tablet, computer, music player, cards, fidget spinner. Next is office supplies. He says to bring a dry erase board, notebooks, pens, dry erase pens, and binder. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm not bringing any of that except for pens. Let's see, rack setup, paracord, bungee cord, velcro. So this one my friend actually explained to me, he had this method where he would like velcro cords and stuff above his bed. He would hook things onto the cords. And I think it was like really cool when he told me about it, but I don't think I'm gonna do that setup only because one, I feel like with my like, you know, building skills, 
like, you know, I just feel like it's gonna fall down. Like, my friggin' lights, I hung them up and they're already on the ground. Like, they've been off the walls. Like, they just fall. So it's like, I don't have patience. And also my fear with that is that, like, from what I've been told, people steal a lot on the ship. And it's not in my nature to really care because, like, I just don't think of people in that manner. Like, I'm like, no, no, people won't take things. I'm, like, maybe a little too optimistic or a little too, I don't know what the word is, but I think I just believe in people a little too much, maybe more than some deserve. So like there probably is, and not there probably, I know that there's a lot of thievery on the ship because I have been told, which is what's making me nervous because I don't have a tendency to think that by myself. So like now that I've been told so many times about this type of stuff that happens on ships, I'm like nervous to have anything out. So I don't think I'll be making this like little, you know, hang your stuff above your bed. Next one is G-Dunk items. G-Dunk is like where you get snacks, I think, um, to trade or consume. Candy, dip, extra belts, extra lights, headphones. So I guess this is just good stuff to have on hand, basically to trade and barter on the ship. Cause I hear like once you are out on the ship for a few months and everybody starts running out of things, you start trading with each other. But the only good thing I can say about that is I'm pretty sure that we're not gonna be out for long extension of periods like that so i feel like i wouldn't need these bartering items i just need to bring enough of my own personal things okay next thing is audio kit make sure i bring headphones splitter extension cord and jack adapters i don't know what jack adapters are my first class she did tell me that they have a tendency in japan to have like um like a two port thing the outlets are different there. I don't really understand what she meant, but the outlets are different there. So she, my hair just fell. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Anyways, we're gonna like act like these are even. I'm just gonna hold my head like this. I think my first class was telling me that the outlets there are basically different, but I'll worry about that a little bit later. Civvies, at least one set of warm weather and one set of cold. So just regular civilian clothes. Backpack or fanny pack for planes, outings and ports, storing your electronics when your big items are stored. So he's just telling me to bring a backpack. So I'm planning on bringing two, my actual really big boot camp backpack that holds basically your whole life. Inside of that backpack, I plan on throwing in my smaller backpack that I plan to use. Passport and ID, I got both of those. Government travel card, I got that. Cash, no shave chits, coins, and boat stuff. I don't know what it means by boat stuff, but cash, so I got told already that we have to bring cash, and when we land in Japan, we're going to switch that out, the dollar for yen, that that's what they use in Japan, and for every like dollar or so in American dollars, it's 100 yen. And I also got told they use a lot of coins in Japan, so my first class recommended a purse because that way you can like hold all your coins. Address book, important phone numbers, do not rely on electronics. When you're out to sea in the middle of the ocean, you're not gonna have your phone working half the time. It'll become like an iPod, so yeah, you'll have certain things, but even that is like, I don't know, you're not always gonna be able to access things. In so that was everything on the first list. So now we're gonna go through the second list. Let's see, uniform items, two coveralls, one NSU, one NWU, PTUs, dress whites, dress blues, white shirts, brown shirts, at least 10 or more, black steel boots and polishing kit, dress shoes, web belts, white and black. I don't need black, white ones because I don't wear belts. Except for the actual coveralls because they're the onesie. That's the only thing that females wear belts with. Oh wait, I'm sorry. We definitely wear them with the end ups. But that's like, I always forget because the uniform shirt is so long. All right, let's continue. Ribbons, name tag, crows, covers. Personal, workout clothes, shorts and shirts, five, I had five pairs or more, personal PT gear, no tank tops. I'm sad. Civvies, two to three outfits, shoes, workout shoes, civilian, shower shoes, socks, 10 plus, underwear, 10 plus, razors, toothbrush, toothpaste, body wash, shampoo, deodorant, with a bunch of exclamation points, I guess people get stinky. Sanitary products, lady hygiene, beauty products. All right, miscellaneous is pens, lots of them, two locks minimum, CAC holder for one import, I don't understand. Laundry soap, laundry bag, and laundry pin. Laundry pin? Laundry pin? I don't, I don't understand. Notebooks, again, I'm not buying that, so I guess Japan. 
Febreze. I mean, I got perfume, mm, same thing. Mini red and white light. That's the red light that I was talking about. These are comfort items, not required. Sleeping bag and pillow, because I hear the pillows on the ship are super crap. It's like just one lumpy piece of cotton in one corner and nothing else. So I probably will buy my own pillow, but in Japan, because when I first get to Japan, I'm gonna be in a hotel anyways. So there's no need for me to go ahead and bring all this and then I have no space, you know? It's like, doesn't make sense. Blackout rack curtains. I guess these are curtains that are a little bit darker because I'm pretty sure the racks have curtains on them, but I guess they're probably crappy, worn down, thin, I don't know. But I guess this is for people who like need to sleep in the dark. That's me. So that might be something that I buy when I get to Japan. Snacks. I don't think I'm gonna buy snacks. I'm just gonna beg my loved ones to send me snacks back from America. Snap on lights for inside your rack. I have a phone, flashlight. I'll just shine it down. Entertainment, switch, laptop, etc. Headphones, bring in headphones. Snacks again. <laughs> snacks is on here twice. I guess I need to bring some snacks before I regret it. Caddy for head items. Oh, so just a little like a shower, a bathroom caddy. A lot of this can be bought after you arrive to the ship waiting to leave for depending on the situation. Basically, I'm looking over this list that I made myself just sitting down at work and it's like all the same stuff. Okay, here's some things that I added though that are different. Black boots are not comfortable. So I added to my list and I think it's very important. I put shoe insert. So I think that that's a great thing to add to your list. The other thing that I had that wasn't on either of these and I don't know why, because you definitely need it, it's a water bottle. You like need a water bottle. Like, I mean, I guess you could buy water bottles, but I don't know how like long that's gonna last you on a ship. Other big thing that I did not mention in this video and I had to come back and record because I forgot, baby wipes. I recommend baby wipes to wipe down your rack to wipe down anything baby wipes and even if you can't they have been sold out in Hawaii in like every store for months but I cannot find my like favorite thing Lysol wipes I would bring some of these like the thinner packs not this one but like I can't because they're sold out. so that's the only thing I think I can say that I added now I'm just gonna read over quickly what was sent to me from my first class petty officer because she's been out before. She began with saying I can get many things once I get to Japan, but she said that the most important thing is you need three locks no matter what brand, a warm fleece, and shower shoes. Any type of entertainment I would like. And she said she's gonna have um, people from back home mail her a flat rate box once we arrive to Japan so that she can receive her heavier items. So that's another option for me. Mm. You won't really want flip flops. Ships won't let you walk around in them. You're gonna want sneakers. Mm. Remember something huge. You need a bathrobe. Our head, bathroom, is not connected to birthing, the racks where you sleep, and we cross a P-way, a hallway, to get it. So I'm going to need to get myself a nice robe because I can't be walking around the ship naked or in a towel. She did say also prescriptions, so I do wear glasses and contacts. I'm actually just gonna stick with my glasses, make my life a little easier, handle any car stuff, and handle any powers of attorney. So powers of attorney, when I'm gone, I can give somebody power of attorney for my room so they can come in and out of my room because they're not allowed to otherwise. I'm chilling. I don't need anybody really coming in my room. I'm gonna bring all that I need with me. And anything else that I don't bring, like I said, I'll probably have my mom and sister send me snacks and little things here and there. And that was basically the summation of all the things I need to bring. So now I am going to write out my list of things that I think I should bring um, from these two lists. And I'm gonna put it all right here. And that's basically it, you guys. That's what you should probably bring with you on your own deployment when you're getting ready to go somewhere. I'm specifically going to Japan. So it's a far ways away. So either way though, whether you're going very far or kind of far, these are just the things I think you would need regardless. Thank you guys so much for watching episode two of the Navy deployment series. I cannot wait to keep on adding more to this series and showing you guys my whole experience going on my first ever deployment with the Navy. I really appreciate you guys for watching. If you haven't already, like or subscribe to my channel if you wanna keep seeing more of these videos. And I really do appreciate it. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye. Can we pretend that airplanes in the night sky are like shooting stars? Girl, we know we're stupid like a tap thing, huh?